Making life worth living and retirement worth having is really about the people in our lives. It's about the way that we feel about our life. It's about the way we allow other people to impact our life. And it's really about how we move through life in a manner that makes sense to our life. You see, when we interact with others, we are always naturally impacted. The only question is, how do they choose to impact us? And how do we, I guess, perceive they impact us? But then there's a truth in between that how a person impacts you can alter your course in life. When someone intentionally goes about altering a course of life of another human being without a thought to what God thinks about it, I mean, truly what God thinks about it, that individual is really trying to play God in someone's life. We often know that it, we, when we want to experience God, that we are really experience God a lot of times through other people. But what type of God are we experiencing? Are we experiencing a loving, peace-oriented Jesus? Or are we experiencing a hateful, hurtful, satanic force that's pretending to be righteous? You see, the pretenders are here to stay. The liars are here to stay. And they're usually doing things in a way that make them completely illicit, immoral, and definitely illegal. Anyone who commits an illegal act is already breaking the rules of God, but they're probably doing it for an illicit or immoral thought in their brain about their rights to play God in someone else's life. When we talk about God, we have to really look at who is in control. If God is really in control of your life, then you will go to life and try and plan with him and plan for things to positively work for you under the realm and in trusting in God. The problem today is that many people are no longer trusting in God. They're not trusting in God anymore because people have run havoc over their lives in the name of God. You see, when we do a lot of things in the name of God, we have to really decide, are we really representing the Lord's highest principles in those moments of time? A lot of people will say, in the name of God, do this, that, and the other thing. Well, what I mean is, when I say it is, in the name of a loving father, a divine heavenly mother, and a profound impact of the world, Lord Jesus, what can we do to love, honor, and uplift the soul that's before us? What can we do to rebuke someone or punish someone is not usually the first point of action because it's not our right to do those things unless those people are harming us or impacting someone else. Now, harm can be noted in all sorts of ways, but we're talking about is soul harm. Soul care, soul keeping is the uplifting of the human soul that the Lord breathed into a child and has been brought forth through parental lineage and openly has been produced into an adult that has the opportunities to serve in the world. When we interfere with that adult's abilities and strengths and talents and skill sets, we are proving that we are not in the house of the Lord. Being in the house of the Lord means we are looking at people's souls, we were determining whether or not we're a good alignment for that soul care. And when we are, we do everything in our power to help them on their plan as the Lord puts it in their heart, mind, and soul to produce. When we try to interfere, when we try to force our control, we literally lose our lives to the Lord. We produce a satanic force in the world that is a destroyer of life and the destroyer of a soul, and that is unlawful. People of faith should be in the house of the Lord. In order to be in the house of the Lord, they have to submit it all. And once they submit it all, they will go through lessons, but they will also find many triumphs. In this moment of life, in your moments of life, you have moments of time to make a difference for someone. Reach out, help someone today to be uplifted in their soul and to provide outstanding service to the world.